major card from this from the sideboard. Well, let's see if it gets its time to shine, and let's take a look at our opening hands here as we are ready to rock and roll. Pretty decent looking opening hand there for Brent, and Yuta seems quite happy, but I do think we had a mulligan there for them. Yeah, looks like a mulligan there, and I'm only, what are we, only seeing one land there with the mammoth? That is not ideal. No, not at all, but we do see some powerful cards there in Owen's Epiphany and Sword coming just to protect, but uh, drawing that Bone Crusher Giant off the top of the library, definitely not something that Yuta will be too pleased about. Yeah. Oh, okay, good. We we did have another land over there. That one was uh, slightly hiding from me, so that's not so bad here. Now, you, we have three lands to play with, um, able to cast a lot of adventure stuff here to draw some cards later, so not so bad. There we go. All good. And Stump always arriving on time. You talk about cards that they always just seem to have. <laughs> <laughs> Stomp and Bone Crusher Giants. It's like, oh, I'd like to play this creature. Oh, no, it has two toughness or less. Oh, I guess it's getting stomped. Yep. It yep, just 100%. manifests in hand. It's like, oh, there's something that needs to be killed. Stomp. <laughs> yeah, if I'm playing an aggro deck, they have Stomp. If I'm playing a Yorian deck, they have Negate. It just never fails. <laughs> I have to agree with you. <laughs> but I also have to say, I have played against Yuta Tagahashi in five different pro tour events or mythic championships. Would you care to guess what my record is against him? You said how many? Five times. Uh, let's say I'm going to be mean here. Own five. Yeah, you're you're right to be mean. <laughs> I'm actually own five against Utah. I don't know. He he's just got my number and just crushes me every single time we've played. So uh, a tough a tough opponent for sure. <laughs> Uh, but it's okay. You'll, you'll, I mean, you'll, you'll get your own against him one day, I'm sure. But uh, <laughs> he's certainly killing it out on the uh, leaderboard at the moment, and we'll be looking to increase his rankings, get as many points as he can this weekend. But for Brent, he is scrabbling to stay in the rivals league, so a lot to play for for both of these players. Yeah, absolutely. Doesn't want to uh, be relegated down to a challenger and uh, try to get there the old-fashioned way. Definitely something you want to stay in is this Rivals League, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. So two creatures down on the battlefield. Now we've got Shepherd of the Flock and Lovestruck Beast in for three points of damage. Goes the Shepherd, but no 1-1 one -one as of yet. Speaking of 1-1s, one -one, here comes the Edgewall Innkeeper, just hanging out here on Utah's side of the battlefield. That was a huge draw, being able to draw that fourth land. A little surprised that we even didn't see Innkeeper into Bone Crusher Giant, but valuing holding up a counter spell since Yuta has so many of them that he wants to make sure and get some value out of it. <laughs> yes, those mystical disputes, they get worse as the game goes on. Uh, really sword cool. coming, we'll just keep it, you know, hiding out there. Just make you guess what it is that uh, <laughs> is hanging out in the Fortel Zone. That's the one thing I really love about these um these team or adventure decks, just the way they're designed, not playing only one foretell card so you just know what it is every single time. Mm -hmm. Maybe not even really wanting to play a ton of Sog Cummings or maybe not even wanting to play a bunch of All Runs Epiphanies, but playing a mix of both I think is really smart because that information in game that you have to guess which one it is is really valuable when you're actually playing. Yeah, it's always a fun little sub game that you play. It's like, hmm, all right, you have something. What is it? Yes. Love Struck Beast on the stack here. Mystical Dispute and Sword Coming are lit up. Do we want to let another 1-1, one, one, or should I say the uh, Heart's Desire side of things resolve, enabling this attack here for Love Struck Beast? Yuta lets it through and move to attacks. We'll see, undoubtedly... Love Struck Beast and Shepherd swing in, but does Brazen Borrow have anything to say about either of these creatures? Yeah, I like the discipline play from Utah using his life total as a resource here, uh, recognizing that it's okay to take five and then deal with the 1-1 one, one creature at end step if Brent doesn't play anything of impact, um, and then go from there. So we are going to see Brazen Borrow intervene here, but going to be played as the creature getting the trigger off of Edgewell Innkeeper, who will very likely, very certainly die to the Shepherd of the Flock. But I'm very interested to see if we're going to see Run Amok being fired off here to keep the Shepherd of the Flock alive. Yeah, definitely not a sentence I would think I'd be saying is Run Amok target Shepherd of the Flock today, but I guess we can all cross <laughs> that off our bingo cards. <laughs> I mean, getting for some extra damage makes that Castle's Fury look all the better. 
It really does. And yeah, like I said, this does feel in some ways like a combo deck with how the pump spells and the fling effects um, really match up quite well against against the standard metagame. Giant Killer is going to hang out in hand. Does know about the Bone Crusher Giants. So we'll have a target there. But Yuta is not keen to carry on this game. Scoops him on up, and Brent Foss takes the first game here in this matchup. Yeah, so maybe a little bit, time. maybe a little bit of a premature scoop, but it definitely was not looking great for Yuta. Uh, Yuta does have a lot of counter spells in the main deck that you know is really planning for one an open deckless tournament, so that your opponent is kind of playing around everything. That's why I like having these like one ofs of disputes um, or run a, one of of run amok stuff like this that kind of keeps your opponent guessing. But something I would assume we're going to be taking out, and it does look like Yuta took out a dispute and a saw coming for a couple of soul seers. Soul seer on rate. Not the best removal spell. Three mana to deal with a card is pretty expensive and standard, to be honest. But that's how few answers there are to Love Struck Beast. And it is just <laughs> a must-kill threat when um, when it just takes over a game if it, uh, if it lasts for a little bit. Yeah, and on Brent's side, a couple more decisions and choices being made there. We see those Dranith Magistrates come in, a couple more removal spells, and run afoul to deal with any of the pesky flyers that Yuta has at his disposal. So we are ready to rock and roll. Let's jump in and take a look at these opening hands. Look at all of those innkeepers. Wow. That is uh, that is quite the key card in this matchup, so I can't <laughs> see uh, wanting to get rid of it. We just need to make sure we hit our land drops, and that is just the dream. Do you like card draw? <laughs> I think I'm, a like fan. I'm a fan. I'm a fan. Yeah. <laughs> that inn is going to be super clean with all this uh, innkeeping that we're going to be going on up here. <laughs> oh. And one, I want to point out one thing that Brent did that I really do like is against a matchup that's going to have a lot of removal, you take out these um, Unleashed Furies and these Run Amucks because if you ever get two for one when you try to cast one of those spells and then they kill your creature, it's such a blowout that um, yeah. Brent is mitigating on that uh, that aspect a little bit. Yeah, that would certainly be a feels bad man if you set up <laughs> yeah. these massive creatures and then all of a sudden your opponent's just like, mm, nope, it dies. Yeah, yeah. <sighs> not, fair. Not, fair. Not, fun. not fair, not fun. <laughs> Little, the land situation for both these players is a little bit awkward. Seeing Fable Passages, the tap lands, Castle's Fury with the other side, you know, Needle Verge Pathway. Mm -hmm. So a lot of decisions taking a bit of time here as both players get set up. Just the Heart's Desire token on the battlefield, along with the first of three Edgewall Innkeepers that Yuta has available. Yeah, and this is the one thing I really love from just standard in general right now. It makes even sequencing your lands a very key decision now with all these mobile double face cards. Mm -hmm. You really have to plan out your lands, and sequencing very much matters in these uh, situations. So, um, you know, just great design in in my mind uh, with these d mobile double face cards. I absolutely love them. I don't love their name, though. They take a long time to say, so I prefer to call them splans. Spell lands, <laughs> you see? Yeah, yeah, that is uh, that is good. I, I think I did read somewhere that Keltime had, like, the most words on cards as well of this set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember, for us, yeah, I remember when the preview started, because Seema, I think, has the most text on her. I'm just like, what, she does what now? And then who? And then, okay, chapter three, because Seema yeah. goes on a v All right, sure. Yeah, yeah, I make sure right when the set came out, Ailey, I, I read a chapter of uh, Cosima every night before I went to bed. And like a, a couple <laughs> weeks in, I had that card down. Yeah, you know, I was ready to play it then. So, yeah, it felt pretty good. What must be feeling pretty good here is Yuta getting another 5-5 five five down on the battlefield, along with the Edgewell Innkeeper, drawing a card, chipping in for one point of damage. But on the other side of things, Brent Foss does have Shodan of the Skulls ready to rock and roll and try and find some more gas in this deck. Slightly confused with uh, Yuta running out his only adventure creatures when you are holding three innkeepers and you have the fourth in play. Oh my goodness. You know, you definitely <laughs> want to be getting to the battlefield here and you have a ton of adventure creatures, so it's not like it's it's an you know, a, a completely unorthodox play, but you do leave a lot of value on the table by not, let's say, just playing two innkeepers this turn and then mm -hmm. next turn playing another innkeeper and then Lovestruck Beast and just drawing four cards. You just cast into the story and Lovestruck Beast in one magic card. So a little interesting there 
from you to side. He's possibly just hoping to find uh, you know, a few more adventure creatures. Does have a deck mm-hmm. chock full of them. As the Lovestruck Beast swings in here, throwing all caution to the wind, and says to the opposing Lovestruck Beast, would you like to dance? Would you like to dance? Yeah, and I don't think I have the right to ever judge any decisions Yuta made after him being 5-0 against me. So, you know, <laughs> we'll we'll leave it to the master here. <laughs> <laughs> so interesting decision here for Brent, who is... Mm-hmm. More inclined to keep around these big, bulky creatures as we do see the castle's fury in hand and ways to pump these creatures up and give them trample and punch through for as much damage as possible. So opts not yeah. to block there. Here we're going to see the second Edgewell Innkeeper, nay, the third, come down as well and hang out with the rest of them. Obosh, the Prey Piercer, brought to hand as well. Yeah, it's pretty interesting because that attack with Lovestruck Beast, they both have reasons to keep their Lovestruck Beast alive, and they're both very different. Yuta wants to be casting the Great Henge, and without a five-power creature, it becomes really tough. But Brent just wants to combo kill Yuta with the five-power creature. So um, really interesting attack and really interesting no block um, from each player. So let's see what Showdown has found for us. There's two lands own crush a giant as well as another copy of showdown of the scalds so brent could have a very very explosive turn next turn and yuta is going to have to find ways to deal with this yep and a little unfortunate for brent i know he would like to have a green source as one of those showdown lands to cast heart's desire here but you know a minor concern there could have actually cast fabled passage to go get a green source but then you leave that land on the table that you would get to normally cast for free um, mm-hmm. with the showdown of the Scald. So I, I like that play from Brent. Yeah. I also like holding the Lovestruck Beast Heart Desire as it is a cheap way to get a counter onto one of the creatures. You know, every true. single every single spell being cast in chapters two and three is going to put a counter on one of your creatures. So the more cheap interaction you have, which adventure creatures have plenty of, the better. Yeah. Showdown is just such an unbelievably powerful magic card. Um, you know, definitely number one or number two in Keldheim as far as uh, power rankings, in my opinion. Um, and just such a fun magic card to play with. <laughs> oh, Alrin's Epiphany being drawn there for Utah. So one way to deal with uh, this opposing threat that's mounting here for Brent is to just never let him have another turn. Yeah. Seems like a good idea. That is a good plan, but for now, uh, Yuta is only playing Gruul, it looks like, unless those basics are some kind of altered art islands. I think those are islands. Oh, those are islands. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. They look like mountains, but... All right, well, then he's he's got everything. Just needs to find another land. Exactly. Second showdown being... Held there above the battlefield. We're going to rock and roll with that. And we're going to start putting counters on our stuff. As we draw more cards. Two Edgewall Innkeepers, a Lovestruck Beast, and a Sajiri Shelter. First things first, let's get some Bone Crushing going. And get these four card-drawing creatures (laughs) off this battlefield, Corey. Have you ever? Unreal. That is just the most terrifying set of one ones you can possibly look at. Like normally you do not think one ones are the most terrifying thing, but innkeepers just represent so much value. We oh, yeah. are seeing from Utah's side the lack of adventure creatures mm-hmm. that makes it, you know, not as uh, frightening there. Ooh, all right. So we found a crack crown pathway. I don't recognize the old art. I'm not sure if that's an island. Otherwise, you might be a little bit more excited. I don't think it's an island. I'm starting to think those uh, are not islands. Or this would be kind of a slam uh, attack with Obosh for a a ton of power uh, since it is doubled and stuff. But, yeah, this is not looking great. No. All right. Can confirm, then. Not islands. (laughs) Even though they're slightly blue. Come on, magic cards. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Yuta swinging in here with the team. Obosh, the Prey Piercer, making these Edgewell Innkeepers even more powerful. And an interesting decision here for Brent. Block, no block. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because the, the Giant Killer has... And this would be extremely good for Yuta if... Yuta was able to take another turn here. It would be, you know, really getting close to lethal even. 
Um, but the way it stands now, Giant Killer gets to eat one of these innkeepers, um, and then you just decide how much damage you want to take. Yep. Spy Killed Ooh. Hazard taking care of one of the blockers. So now it's just the Giant Killer going to jump in the way here of Obosh the Prey Piercer with the three Edgewell innkeepers chipping in here for damage. I say chipping, but, you know, they're they're doing quite a lot of damage. Yeah, for one yeah, ones. yeah. <laughs> a chip and a punch, if you will. Yeah. Yeah, this is interesting. So taking six damage versus taking ten. Yeah, that is a big chunk. But, uh, you know, I, I think I would have liked to eat an innkeeper here just with there's not being a possibility to actually all runs epiphany this turn. You know you're just going to be untapping next turn. Mm-hmm. And you're going to be able to spray the boar with a country with a bunch of creatures. And it, it's a small thing, but you don't have that creature in play for the first creature that you play. So you're going to lose that value of one counter. Not yeah. the biggest deal, but it is a factor. Yeah, not the biggest deal. And, uh, you know, can get down one of the early creatures or just play the biggest thing that you have available to you, being the Bone Crusher Giant, I believe. But then you lose value on the Edgewell Innkeeper. So going to go to that first. It seems Brent Foss is. And uh, double showdown triggers. That's gross. <laughs> it's insane. Yeah. And I, I guess the one thing that we are kind of uh, playing down, playing around right now for Brent is like a Goldspan Dragon. Um, mm-hmm. but with Obosh on the battlefield anyways, if you don't eliminate that, Goldspan Dragon is still lethal. Yeah. Oh, pretty, pretty rough spot. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit painful, unless we can get to a point where we leave up Kazel's Fury, able to take out Obosh, something along those lines. But for now, let's just play spells and put counters on things, as we're going to draw two cards here off of Edgeville Innkeeper. Bone Crusher Giant coming on down. This is the proper thing to be doing with Edgewall Innkeepers, playing mm-hmm. adventure creatures. It's a, yeah. a, the hidden trick there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it's just so much value. These cards are yeah. incredibly good. Yeah, that is one card when Throne of Eldraine came out. I just did not have as, like, going to be this impactful. I was like, yeah, it's a 1-1, one, one. sure, we're going to get some value there. I uh, greatly underestimated how powerful these adventure creatures are, especially oh, yeah. when you mix them with uh, the Great Henge, or now the new toys of Showdown, Goldsman oh, yeah. Dragon, and All Runs Epiphany. All right, so... Unfortunately, still no blue mana here for Yuta as Alrin's Epiphany can only be sent into the Fortel Zone. Fire Prophecy drawn off the top of the library. What can Brent do with all this mana? It's like an embarrassment of riches. Yeah, yeah. Brent has a lot of options. And I can't but uh I can't help but going back to that one turn from Utah, I think this was an extremely big turning point in the game. Yeah. Was that turn four when it was uh, Innkeeper into Lovestruck Beast instead of just Innkeeper, Innkeeper, and then the next turn Innkeeper, Lovestruck Beast? That yeah. was a that was a miss out, missed opportunity of three cards, and this game wasn't decided by that Lovestruck Beast being played a turn early. In fact, it didn't really matter um, mm-hmm. that much since it just directly traded. So you got to think that that was a big turning point in the game as far as the value Utah could have acquired. Yeah, and, you know, there's no way to know. We'll see a couple cards being drawn here off the top and see what he might have found for himself. But I, I agree with you. I think that was definitely a place where he should have maybe taken an extra second just to evaluate yeah. how how big of an impact these Edgewell Innkeepers can make in multiples. Totally agree. And I do like that Arena doesn't give you the option to draw a card after the game is done. You know, I always have to look, <laughs> and it's, it's always what I don't want it to be. You know, it's the game-winning mm-hmm. spell or my blue source. So I like that Arena doesn't put me through that pain. So kudos <laughs> to uh, that program. <laughs> All right, Fatal Passage now. going to go and search up one of the basics. One more forest available if he so chooses, but it looks like we're going to go for planes, perhaps. does have the giant killer available, so if there is a Goldspan Dragon off the top of the library, there is an answer for it. Yeah, which that, I think, just has to be the main concern, because that's how you, you lose this game. Otherwise, yeah. you're so far ahead on board, you just don't want to get cheesed out 
So something yeah. like that when you have 1,000 cards in hand and basically <laughs> full control of this game. Yeah. Now it's just a case of, all right, so I'm looking pretty good here. Now how do I lose? Let's just make sure that I've got an answer for it. There's two Castles Fury as well as a Giant Killer in hand. So there are ways to deal with a Goldspan Dragon. Should it arrive, but it is not. It is an island, the first island. <laughs> all right. Can we find another one, Yuta? And we do have that petty theft to do something here. Uh, I think it's just going to be on keep Utah alive duty mm -hmm. for a little bit. But, uh, you know, if we can top deck another blue source, maybe we can uh, string together um, something here. But it is definitely advantage bar in favor of Brent here. Oh, um, very who, much who has, so. Who has just played great. Who has really played some tight magic uh, um, this game. And, you know, pretty much has a lock on this game as long as he plays – defensive and protective in case a top deck gold span dragon or something yeah. like that. So a choice here to be made. Do I remove two blockers or am I going to get rid of this Obosh the Prey Piercer? Opts to use both fire prophecies on the Prey Piercer. Fire prophecy sending away a card finds a Sajiri shelter. And there is the concession from Yuta. Brent Foss picking up a very, very Impressive victory there with Naya Adventures. We didn't get to see the one-two punch, unfortunately. 